It's a pleasure to have Dr. Johnson and Nick back with us today. When you look at a list of the worst cities for allergies in the country, you'll see Jackson, Mississippi on that list. You'll see Knoxville on that list, and you'll also see Memphis on that list. Why is this part of the country so bad for allergy sufferers? Well, you know, never having lived in Knoxville and, uh, uh, you know, only having lived in Memphis, I, I think I can speak from Memphis and then I can, or we can assume Nick, Nick has lived in Knoxville. But in Memphis, uh, supposedly, uh, just the way the fact that the, the land is flat, uh, the uh, air rolls right across the Mississippi River, it's delta flatland, and it's a moist, humid in, environment that tends to carry the pollen more and make it more ingested or, or, or breathed in by people. As we know, it covers cars when those trees uh, first start to pop out. So I know that's the case for Memphis and haven't read about that. So this is, uh, uh, I guess, an allergist dream that uh, would be treating this. Uh, there's a lot of allergists in Memphis, Tennessee. As far as Knoxville goes, Nick, I don't know what your opinion is on that. Uh, with Knoxville, you know, you get a lot of mountains, a lot of trees that are pollinating, but one of the things, like Dr. Johnson was saying specifically about Memphis is you've got no barriers that, that are blocking that pollen and from being concentrated and kind of moving across and spreading across anything. So um, the, the humid environment here, the air is heavier, so it's going to keep that pollen, you know, closer um, to the people, and, and which creates havoc. Um, because it spreads all over everything. And what percentage of the population suffers with allergies? Uh, 60 to 70 percent of people suffer with allergies. And, and I think one of the things that we find in examining eyes is people tend to think that, oh, I've got allergies, okay, so I take Claritin or I found something, uh, a Sudafed or something like that. But this is something that we'll hear when people come in, and they think that by taking something oral is going to take care of their eyes. Their eyes are hurting and itching, and it's not an oral medication. It might not even be the appropriate one for their allergies. Treatment of the eyes is totally separate, and given and suggested uh, medication eye drops are ones that are chosen versus ones that just don't have a, a cool label on them at the drugstore or grocery store. You know, it's, it's probably not appropriate, uh, but people don't know that, and people um, are convinced by labels. <laughs> We have definitely talked about environmental causes for allergies, but what are some of the other causes for allergies? That's a, a very good question. I will say a little bit about this, and, and, and Nick uh, has, has got some of his own opinions here, but a lot of times when people will come in, uh, this, is, this is pretty wild, but one thing we'll ask them, have you switched detergents lately for your for your uh, uh uh, bed sheets or your pillowcases. Oh, yeah, I have. Have you changed your contact lens solutions? Okay, in those, they're, they may be allergic to something in their detergent, what I was saying as far as uh, what, what they've got in terms of washing their clothes with their bed sheets. Have you changed your contact lens solution? They may have a preservative in there they're allergic to. What have you done differently, uh, lifestyle-wise, medication-wise? Have you gotten a new dog, a new pet? <laughs> Also, Nick, uh, I would say another uh, factor would be medications, the medications people are taking, you know, both oral medications, um, you know, for all sorts of systemic conditions. Uh, with a lot of ladies, they're using a lot of makeup and skin lotions and things like that, um, which can lead to, you know, allergic symptoms. Um, also, on the medication standpoint, uh, one of the biggest things out right now is Flonase, which just went over the counter. It's the most widely used, uh, you know, allergy uh, intranasally. Well, one of the biggest uh, contraindications or side effects uh, with Flonase is actually um, dry or irritated eyes. So um, those symptoms are, are, particip are precipitated um, from the medications, the skin lotions, the makeup things, uh, and applications that everyone's using. And when we talk about allergies, Dr. Johnson, you as an optometrist, I know you see plenty of patients that come in there with these allergy problems. What are the symptoms you see that become noticeable in the eyes? Kind of twofold there. You just touched on it there. Um, and, and, and one of the things is one of the first places people come is where they really notice it is in their eyes. Sometimes it's nasal or they're just congested in their head, but... Uh, it's in their eye, so they come to the eye doctor first uh, to, 
you know, say, well, you know, what's going on? What's wrong? Who should I see? I mean, can you take care of this? So the symptoms lots of times are my eyes just burn. My eyes just feel really dry or I have to blink a lot or nighttime vision's blurry. Well, I will say when you blink, does that make it better? Well, a lot of times dry eyes give symptoms of itchy eyes. So they're not really allergies, but they're really a dry eye situation for which we treat. And there's a number of different medications or procedures that we do uh, that will alleviate that. And that's kind of where we start. And then after that, if that's not really helping it in short term, we haven't come back. Then we see what medications they one may be taking, uh, as Nick referenced earlier, but what medications that we might prescribe that would be specifically for their eyes, not just a tablet for their body, that would relieve the itching uh, symptoms or sensations because it depends on the severity because some people have just a slight redness and say, my eye, there's red blood vessels in my eyes. They're just larger than they used to be. Look like I've been out all night, you know, or some people come in and their eyes are just really swollen. It can hardly open them and real sensitive to light. So um, those, those are, uh, I guess, the main symptoms. And also, could you, I know you stressed this earlier in the interview, but could you, again, stress the importance of the difference between prescription eye drops and what you might find in over-the-counter eye drops and the difference in what you might recommend for a patient given the severity of the problem? Sometimes uh, the, 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 one of the big things that we always ask people to do is when they come in for their eye exam is to bring, uh, if they're, they're saying, I'm calm, my eyes are just really bothering me. Well, are they itchy? And this, and this is this is the initial phone call that they would make to the office in terms of setting up the appointment. And uh, so we would want to know what they were using and have them bring those because lots of times they don't remember the names. And most of the times, one over the counter are not appropriate. Uh, most of the times, they're using Visine. And and so then those have preservatives in there that can cause their eyes to become more red and irritated. So we look at that. Sometimes we have to take them off of that for a period of time before we have to give them some kind of drop to alleviate their symptoms. But then we gradually uh, kind of wing them off of a product that might just have red eyes label on it. Or uh, I use Visine or I just found these. I don't know what they are. You know, uh, it's their store brand. Uh, and, and so when they come in, we say, Look, stop that. <laughs> let's, don't, let's don't use those anymore. Uh, this is either situation dries, which we measure their tear film to see if that's the case. And then, uh, uh, then we kind of gauge, you know, their other symptoms and when that occurs. Uh, based on, like we said earlier, if it's just at night, well, if it's just at night, you're not going to have allergy eyes just at night. You know, and so sometimes, like I said, it could be dry. They have to blink and it's clear. But uh, many times... The treatment is similar, be it dry eyes or allergy eyes, except then you have to use a specific, sometimes it's a steroid eye drop that reduces inflammation. Sometimes it's a drop that's an antihistaminic drop uh, that uh, reduces uh, the sensation of the uh, histamine released. That's why they call it antihistamines when you take them. But uh, anyway, and, and those are those are drops that can be used either once a day or just depending on the severity. Sometimes we have to use more than one type of drop to really get it under control. And then a lot of patients will come back and say, you know, it's just certain times of the year, so I'm so glad you prescribed those drops. I use them or I've used them up. Can you prescribe some more and double check what's going on? So I would I would really caution people to not go to the store and go down that eye drop uh uh, vitamin drop, a uh, vitamin aisle, and just try to pick something that seems to look good. But they do so because it's convenient, and they don't know, and they're 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 not thinking, oh, it's not that bad. But it can get that bad, and it can start to impact their uh, their eye health and their vision if they don't see about it. And and that has to be determined by coming in and getting your eyes examined and evaluated for that specifically. I think that's the biggest thing that we're constantly educating people when they come in. Itchy and watery eyes tend to go together with allergies. What percentage of patients who take allergy medication may suffer from itchy and watery eyes? Uh, about 73% of patients uh, are taking uh, allergy medication suffer from those symptoms. And what can people do when it comes to eyewear 
to prevent dry eyes and allergy eyes? What can they wear? That's a great question, Vance. Um, with a lot of people outdoors, whether you're just out walking, you're biking, doing something more athletic, or even just walking to the mailbox or to your car, um, really good wrap polarized sunglasses and protective eyewear uh, can help reduce some allergy symptoms uh, simply by, you know, creating a barrier uh, between yourself and the environment. Um, as far as that goes, there is a uh, particular fits that people need to be really fit with because a lot of times we'll see patients that come in uh, with their eyewear or sunglasses um, that they may have picked up at, you know, at the mall or somewhere and they're just too small or too big and they're just falling down their faces. So there's a lot of pollen out there in the air and sunglasses provide um, good wrap coverage to keep it out of their eyes. And beyond that, Vance, we can do their prescription in those sunglasses and protective eyewear, which allows people um, to see well uh, clearly while protecting their eyes. What about this promotion that's going on at the eyewear gallery over there at Perkins Extended on this upcoming Friday, April 24th? On Fridays in April, Vance, we are uh, sponsoring free vision screenings and allergy screenings from 12 to 2 p.m. Um, also, throughout the month of May, um, we will be sponsoring these screenings uh, on Fridays from 12 to 2. Um, you can schedule these screenings by calling our office at 901-763-2020. Uh, you can also visit our website at www.eyeweargallery.com. Um, we want to really encourage uh, people to consult their eye doctor with these symptoms. You know, as Dr. Johnson was saying earlier, a lot of patients and individuals pick up things from, you know, the drugstore or the pharmacy uh, because of a label that looks good or maybe a Google search revealed something from somebody's opinion. But, in fact, a lot of those products and a lot of those eye drops picked up at those pharmacies have a lot of preservatives that can actually make symptoms worse. Um, can also increase inflammation and, and, and not really treat um, the symptoms or the, or the issues that uh, our allergy sufferers are facing. So yeah, we spend a lot of time researching different products, different methods, and different applications um, that we can offer our patients to, to diagnose and, and treat them uh, so they have symptom relief and can continue enjoying their days and working and, and just enjoying life in general. Before we go, is there anything that either of you would like to add about allergy eyes and what the eyewear gallery can do for allergy eyes? Uh, Nick's going to have something to say and I'll have something to say. I think that what people need to know is that they should keep their eye health examined every 12 months because most people tend to assume that I'll know when something's wrong when I can't see. All right? Well, we always like to use the adage is that when you buy your toothbrush, <laughs> you know, when I know I need to brush my teeth. And so we'll get off that analogy. But, but again, to help people make more sense of the need for their eye health care, that you can't have sight-threatening problems, be them big or small, that could be developing and the patient would have no symptoms or they may have symptoms. But by the time that they do have symptoms, it could be something that's very, very hard to treat or it may be some permanent loss of vision. Uh, whether we're talking about allergies or glaucoma or cataracts or macular disease. So I, I would think in, in my portion of the party that it's just really important that people act on uh, their, their eye health at least yearly. We're never going to tell them they need to change their glasses if they're seeing fine because a lot of times they'll say, I see fine, I don't want to buy any glasses. That's great, that's fine. We just want to make sure your eyes are healthy so those glasses can continue to allow you to see. Also, to follow up to what Dr. Johnson was saying, Vance, is, you know, just speaking from my point of view, too, um, I was a habitual contact lens wearer and a lot of, uh, you know, peers my age in their 20s and 30s and coming out of their teen years just wear their contacts and, and really overwear them. And, and what I've seen is it, it's caused me to become more nearsighted um, prior to um, Dr. Johnson, you know, educating me on the risks of overwear in my contacts. I now wear glasses, uh, you know, five to six days a week and, and contacts for, for different occasions. But my eyes feel better. I can see better. Um, they're healthier. Um, I've been combating dry eyes and allergy eyes for the past couple of years, and I will say that 
uh, my symptoms have significantly decreased. But I would encourage all, everyone, no matter, you know, how well you think you can see or how young you are, you need to have a yearly eye health exam. You know, think about your eyes because your eyes are so important. We want to preserve vision, uh, find early signs of sight-threatening conditions so that we can live out our lives and, you know, not ignore things and ignore symptoms and, and push them to the side. You know, have them examined, you know, with your eye doctor um, to make sure everything's healthy. The eyes are the windows um, to a lot of things, a lot of systemic conditions, including diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, cholesterol can be picked up in eye exams, and we see it all too often in, in people of all ages from, you know, 18 to 88. So um, that, that's the most important thing, uh, whether we're talking about allergies, dry eyes, any type of systemic condition, having your eyes examined will ensure um, that you can remain healthy and wholesome uh, for a long time to come. And, Vance, one other thing to add to that, in this practice, we're, we practice medical optometry, just like Nick's talked about the health problems that go on your body that can affect your vision. And a lot of times people don't think that. I just need to take my blood pressure pill and keep that under control. I see okay now. My eyes are fine. I see great with my glasses. I, I think that we just need to be on the forefront of educating people uh, about their vision system because that's one of our, our uh, most precious senses. And I think most everyone would agree that they'd rather not outlive their sight than their uh, hearing or their uh, sense of touch or other senses that 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 we want people to understand and yet they have what we, we hear so many times in in the offices especially with mainly new patients but uh, they say that no one's ever told them this and so we we have a lot of technology to determine whether or not there's problems a lot of technology uh, that we can then use additional testing to figure out and pinpoint exactly what their situation may be, and it may be in combination with some of these other health problems, like Nick has noticed that we first pick up on because we, we do so many tests, you know, checking people's blood pressure and color vision can, a reduction can lead to macular disease. And I know this gets off a little bit from eye allergy and itchiness and all those kind of symptoms and the percentage of people that suffer, but, uh, and how they obtain what they, uh, use to, treat that themselves, but it's, I think a, a huge point here is that we really start to, as much and as often as we can, keep hitting home that, you know, keep your eye health examined. If you never buy a pair of glasses or wear a pair of contact lenses or wear a pair of sunglasses or readers, if you never do any of those things, you want to make sure that you're procuring your vision throughout your lifetime. Nick, again, could you give the contact information? Yes, sir. Um, you can reach our office at 901-763-2020. Uh, we're located at 428 Perkins Extended in Memphis in the Laurel Wood uh, shopping area. You can also visit our website, www.eyeweargallery.com, and you can also schedule appointments online 24-7 uh, on our website, eyeweargallery.com. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Dr. Warren Johnson and Nick Poveromo of the of the Eye Gallery here in Memphis. This